this month I fixed an issue that was plaguing us for a while, which is essentially if you start to play anywhere that is over an object that is still loading, then you will go right through when you play. And you will end up where you're not supposed to be. As a workaround, we would just start higher and then just hope that everything had loaded. But as a demo and the map got more populated with assets and there's more to load, most of the time it wouldn't have loaded anyways. I decided to address this problem and it saved us a lot of time and a lot of frustration. So essentially what I'm doing is I am setting the movement mode to none and then I'm just waiting until the world partition cell is ready and then I enable the movement. And as an added bonus, in the editor, you already know if something loaded underneath you. Um, so I just added some logic so that if you press any key, your movement will continue. And that's just for the editor. So I can see that the ground is there. I can land on it. And even if the world is still loading, I, I'm okay to start my adventure. I made all my logic in code, but I decided to do a blueprint version for this video just to show visually what I'm what I'm thinking. Um, so the first part was to set the default movement mode to none. Um, so here you could set it to none. And if you hover over this, you'll see that this is used at player startup or when teleported. Probably set this to none. I'm setting in a code, so I won't do that here. And then when uh, this is this would be your player character, so either your third person character or whatever character your project is using for player. I overrode the event possessed and then I have a timer that essentially just checks pretty often. It just calls this function. It just asks the world cell, has it loaded? And then if it loaded, then I set the new movement mode to walking and it'll resume setting the movement correctly and I invalidate this timer. And the one function I saw that was exposed to Blueprint is, is streaming completed? For the Blueprint version, I just get the actor location and I could have a radius, but I decided to just use the grid loading range. So maybe this is good to just ensure that stuff underneath you is loaded. So maybe you could use a radius. Please put in the comments if, if that was useful, if, if the radius was, was nicer. And then it just queries, it just asks, okay, are you loaded? What triggers this cell or this world partition cell to load is that the player controller is by default a streaming source. So it will try to load everything around your player unless you set that to false. I do have a video about uh, world partition for at least the setup and how to visualize it. So you can click on this one if you're interested. And then on end play, you make sure to invalidate your timer because you might have some problems if this is still there. Okay, so I will personally unhook that because I have all my logic in code. So for my first step, I overrode setting the movement mode. So the function set default movement mode. And I have my own character movement component, which I called human character movement component. I don't remember why I called it human, uh, but it's essentially just the movement component for my player character. So gliding, diving, and whatnot. Yeah, so F12, I will go to it. I essentially just set the movement mode to move none. Okay, and then in my character, so in your case, if you're not using Lyra, it would just be your third person character or, or just your player character. I just added a function and I called it enable movement when world is ready. And I have a timer handle as well for that function that is just going to query, is the world ready? I would have actually preferred if there's some kind of event or something I can listen to just to query, hey, this is my streaming source and bind something for when it has loaded. I'm guessing it might be problematic because it's continuously loading. So maybe that's why it's probably better just to, to ask it when I need to ask. So I'll start with um, this function that I that was already overridden. I added logic. I'm just going to scroll down. Okay, so this is the block of code that I added. And essentially, I just, I just make sure that the player controller is valid and that we 
are using the world partition subsystem and it's valid. And then I just set a timer and I make sure to keep that handle so I can correctly clear it uh, on end play. Okay, and then it's the same deal here. The rate is 0.2 seconds, some delay of 0.2, and I make sure that it is looping. And then I'm gonna navigate to that function. So F12, and this is my function. And it has a lot of checks. Um, I used to have a lambda and I captured everything, but then it might get invalidated. Let's say I, I leave early or whatnot. Uh, so I just I just made sure to just have a fresh clean plate and just make sure that everything's valid. I call this function just to see if the streaming is completed. And this one isn't available through Blueprint, but it was in code, which is nice. And the player controller, if I hover over that, you can see that it's a streaming source provider. And yeah, this one is a registered source for World Partition loading. The player controller is a streaming source because uh, this bowl here is set to true. So enable streaming source, whether the player controller should be used as a world partition streaming source. I guess if you wanted it to be more specific to the pawn or whatnot, you could have a streaming source component on your pawn, uh, but this was sufficient for me. So back here, uh, this is a nice bonus that I added. So if you are using the editor, then I have a way to skip waiting for world partition. Um, so it, it will stop querying and asking, hey, is this world partition done? And it will just skip to setting the movement mode to walking. It, this was nice. I could just ask if any of the input keys are down and then you can go on your merry way. Um, so that worked for me. The reason why I check if with editor is that in a, in a build, when all this is loading, I do keep a, a loading screen on it would be problematic if the player starts to move and things haven't loaded yet, uh, but they had no idea, you know, they were just playing with the controller. Which leads me to my next section is how I handle the loading screen for when the world partition is still loading. One last thing for our character class, uh, we just have to make sure on end play to unbind that timer handle. Um, so just here, if you have a valid timer handle, just make sure to clear that timer. I definitely had some crashes without this, especially if it was querying that world partition state when I was exiting the level. So this is very important. This part is mostly if you're using Lyra or if you're using Lyra's common loading screen. Any component that implements the iLoading process interface uh, so it, it gives them a reason to keep the loading screen longer. This is a nice function where you can put your own logic of if you should show your loading screen. So I'll navigate to it. So F12. I added another reason. So the first one I added was the done initial shader compiles. If you're interested in how to hold your loading screen longer, and wait until the shaders have done compiling, I do have a video on the subject. Um, so this is on top of that logic. Uh, so this is the logic I've added. So again, if you're in the editor, you don't want to hold that loading screen. You kind of want to skip all that waiting. Uh, so I, I kept that uh, the same as the, the shaders loading. And I have a new bowl for done initial world partition. And if you're not in the editor, and if you haven't finished loading your world partition, then I just give that reason here. So the world partition is still loading and the done initial world partition is in your bool that I've added and I will search for the usage. So shift alt F12, I'm using writer. And if I remember well, it's always fuzzy remembering your, your initial setup. I'm using the resharper uh, Visual Studio key bindings. Essentially, whenever this uh, experience manager is ticking, I added the logic so that first the loading screen will wait until the shaders have all compiled and then it will query the world partition because there, there's no reason to ask the world, hey, are you ready uh, when the, the loading screen is already up because it, it was waiting for the shaders to compile. 
But yeah, essentially, if you're not done the initial world petition check, I do the same logic that I did for the player. So I just ask, hey, this streaming source, is the streaming completed? And if it is, then true. And I, I'm i done ticking because at this point, I don't need to know if the shaders are done or if the world is done because we're in business and we're ready to play. Everything is good. So yeah, after all this code or the blueprint version, then you're ready to stop falling through your objects or through your floor and all that. And then the loading screen is also taking care of hiding all, all of that loading. Some extra considerations is, in my case, I pretty much only have the player character that could potentially fall through the floor. Um, in your project, maybe you have some, some NPCs, some AI that, that walks around, and they might also need that extra consideration of not immediately falling through the floor, whatever object they're on. And also when you teleport your player, you will also have to ask that cell or um, in my case, I have I have some teleporters that I essentially turn on their streaming source component so that they start to load their area before the player teleports to it. And it's, it's not exactly perfect. And that one does wait for the full cell to load. So it's it's a bit, it makes it longer, even if whatever is close to you has already loaded and you wouldn't fall through. Um, so yeah, there's probably some improvements to be done there. But yeah, this has helped so much uh, because yeah, we used to just play way up there and then start to play. And then especially the nice, um, the nice player starts that we placed that those would also make us fall through the objects but yeah i hope this is as useful as it has been for me as always thank you for watching and thank you so much patrons for your continued support and i'll see you in the next one